Hello everyone, in this video I will be analyzing a divine mid player and critique his gameplay and what he could have done better. So without further ado, let's get into it. Before we move into the actual game, I wanna talk about the lane matchup. So this mid lane matchup is heavily favored for Queen of Paint for several reasons. Uh, since the removal of the small camp, Storm can't actually farm that either. And Cop's dagger is really good against Storm because Storm always has to come near the creeps to use his remnant to secure them. And Cop can always use his dagger and right click him a couple times and then the Storm can't actually lane after a certain point. What Co-op needs to do is play the first few waves right and then she can just snowball from the lane. Like this lane could get to a point where the Co-op could be two levels ahead of the Storm. Like basically the Co-op could be level six while the Storm would be level four. Unless the Storm gets help from his teammates, I don't see Storm winning this lane. Moving on to the early itemization. So this isn't for the player. This is for the viewers who are learning mid or like curious about what to buy early on in the game. So with the exception of Shadow Fiend, any range hero that likes to buy bottle usually goes for the same build. Unless they're against a Batrider who then they have to go for the stick build early on because without that they can't actually lane against a bat. And it's like super high value. So you have to always go this like somewhat this build like triple branch, four branches but then it's all the same. So you can get your bottle early. If you're not playing some hero that doesn't buy bottle like let's say OD Necrophos then you can go for the null components instead or you could go for the hammer component on OD. Moving on, I want to see your ward placement. So you're going here and you're just like chilling here. So I'll give you a better, better technique basically. So let's just, just go free camera and put this like this, right? So right now, what you can see is like, usually like the enemy millionaire is going to walk here and then they're going to also want to plant the ward the same way as you are doing, right? So what you can do early on is like, you can go someplace like here, like you can walk to their uphill, right? And then what you want to do here is that you just like stand here. If the tower doesn't hit you at this point, then that means that, that they don't have vision on you. So you can put your ward on their high ground, which is very unlikely to get dewarded compared to whether you put it here or here, like it, it can get dewarded, but they wouldn't expect a ward to be on their high ground. If the tower does hit you, that means they have a ward and then you just like, you just like reveal a ward. So it's like a win-win situation to trust. So try to do this if you're a mid player, in general and you you have like trouble warding this gives you like vision on uh, the enemy high ground and you can also see rotations so there's like one more thing i want to point out when it comes to warding on radiant and dire usually you want to ward towards the enemy safe enemy offlane the reason being is that usually the position four is going to gank you so if you're playing radiant the position four is going to gank you from here right if the mirana is position four she's gonna like come somewhere here so if you have a ward here you can obviously spot her see if she's making a rotation because position fives don't rotate at all in early games it's usually the position four and similarly for dire you want to place your ward somewhere here or here so that you can see the hoodwing rotate because the hoodwing is going to be position four moving on to the early block so there's like a thing about Radiant is that like if you see this, like when you're standing here, the creeps will just divide from this point and this point, right? So if you stand here at this spot, like in this in this uh, square, then the creeps usually form a line and they go from the left side. And then it's easier for you to block. But anyway, well, let's just see how you block. Your blocking is fine. Like, I mean, you could block a bit better, but this is fine in general. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna explain is that sometimes when you're blocking like this and the enemy doesn't block, the wave will enter your tower. So if you run in a situation like this, what you wanna do is that when you have a ward placed and you can see their high ground, you can usually see their creeps coming, right? So instead of blocking, when you, when you see that their creeps are going to get into your tower, what you wanna do is that you wanna stop blocking and go to your ramp, like somewhere here where you, the cop is standing right now, and you wanna aggro the creeps on you. Like, don't let them get inside the tower. Tank them a bit so that the creeps don't enter the tower because when they enter your tower, it's really hard to last it. Not only that, it will produce a slingshot effect, especially in matchups like this where you have the advantage. It's bad for you because you can't actually harass the storm in any way because the wave is just gonna keep slingshotting, which is good for him. So when you're playing these matchups, make sure the wave is always on your high ground where you can pressure the storm form. So you got a decent block here. The thing that I don't like here is that storm's like really far away. Like you can see that he's like super far away, he's scared, but you're also going back. 
So instead of do being like this, stand a bit closer, right? So you can like zone this guy out. Like you can assert dominance that, yeah, I'm standing here. If you come closer to me, I can use my dagger on you, right? He doesn't know what you're going to skill. So he has no idea. He's just like standing super far away because he's like scared that you're going to use your dagger on him and harass him. So like this happens. You're taking a lot of damage. And it's like, and now your creep gets denied as well. Okay. So like, it's like, now you're not going to get level two and Storm has like free creeps. Even though you get a deny, but this isn't worth. When you're like this, and you understand that four of my creeps are hitting one of their melee creep, right? Like we can see that. So, and if you uh, skill scream, you can just right click the range creep, uh, and use your scream and secure both the creeps. Then you have like four creeps, and they have two creeps, right? And then after that, if Storm tries to aggro the melee creeps, he's just gonna tank them because he doesn't have a range creep. Like if he doesn't have a range creep, then these three creeps will always aggro onto their Storm, right? And then you can just deny this range creep for free. Because if he comes near, you're just going to harass him a lot. Like, he's going to be super scared of going here. So this way you get your level 2. You don't get denied. And then he also denies range creep. So you get level 2 before him. And when that happens, you have your Q as well. And when you have your Q, you use your Q on him under tower and you harass him. And then you can get a couple denies as well. Right? But since you don't do that, it's like you're tanking a lot of creeps. You use your scream to secure a melee creep, right? And then... You almost miss it, like you get denied here. So yeah, do you see like this type of way? Like, yeah, he lost a lot of HP, but it's like he got a lot out of this. Like if you see, yeah, you both got three creeps, which should not be happening this easily, right? And now you're tanking creeps again. You got this, you got another deny, which is good. And now the problem right now is that since the first wave wasn't completely perfect, now you're at like 50 mana, right? You don't have any mana, you don't have any bottle, and storms are obviously going to check that. And when Storm does check that, he's going to say like, okay, so this guy can't use any spells on me. I can be a bit aggressive, right? And then he's going to play a bit aggressive. And now he has the advantage in a way. Like, like you see, like he's going to start playing aggressive. Suddenly he's like being manning up on you because he can see that you don't have any spells. So you can just do that. He gets a free deny. And like the way this matchup is supposed to go is that you should be owning. So you saw how like you fucked up the first wave because you had to use Scream twice to secure creeps and then you didn't have any mana. Now you see that you don't have your bottle, you just got your bottle and now you're like double waved and stuff like that is happening. So it's like you're being pressured by a storm. Like he has like 10 lasses while you have 7 and he has like 4 denies which should not be happening in any way. And now you do get the, the water rune but it's like, uh, like, you know, like storm's getting a lot of out of this, which is the, which is the exact issue. So this is good. I like this. I like the fact that you understood that. Yeah, I have like two levels in my queue. He's trading low ground to high ground, which is really stupid. If you're a mid laner, never trade low ground to high ground because you're always going to lose that trade. But since so he decides to do that, you're just hitting him a couple times and suddenly he's like 40% HP, right? So this was like really good. And now you're in a, you're in a situation where you're going to get level four before him. Because your creeps are standing on high ground and he's, his are not. So they're going to eventually die. So the way you want to play this after this can make you come back in this lane really easily. So basically, like, what do you want to do right here? Like, if, if, if I'm playing this matchup, I will, like, probably kill these two creeps as soon as I can. And then I'm going to blink on his high ground. And then I'm going to use my Q. And then I'm going to pressure him, right? This is what I would do. So you're denying a lot. And then you have, like, level 4. But since you don't have many creeps, like, you can't exactly do that. So maybe in the next wave you can do that. So yeah. So here, basically, you see like his range creep is dying. He doesn't have any creeps. So look at his position right now. Like, so you see, he's completely out of position. You jump, you blink over here, use your Q, right? So he's like a few choices. Either he's going to turn on you, use his W and like do damage to you. That way your creeps are going to reach on him because he's just like standing there. He's going to take a lot of damage or he has to just run back, right? And this way you can deny the range creep. You can deny the melee creep because he's just going to be like super pressured. But you don't do anything like that, and then it's like he just like gets all the creeps inside the tower, is what I think is gonna happen. Okay, so yeah, you see, like nothing happened because you didn't take advantage of the double wave that was gonna push into the storm. And since that didn't happen, he's just like still chilling. Like, you see, like he's ahead in terms of like last. Yeah, he's obviously not gonna be ahead in terms of like net worth, but it's like the difference is very minimal. Like, the way it should be is that if you want to snowball this matchup, because this is like a super favored matchup for Cop then you should be in a situation where you're level 6 and he's like level 4. But right now, you guys are like equivalent levels. And after level 6, Cop can't actually pressure this hero anymore because your dagger doesn't do anything because he can always dodge it with the with his ult. So another thing that I want to point out is that usually if you're buying creds, 
instead of buying a robe of the Mali, you should buy gloves, right? Since Cop relies on her dagger and then like right clicks, you should like buy gloves, especially in these matches where you can just like harass this guy a lot because he can't reach you. Like there's no way a storm can ever reach a cop unless he has ult, right? So if he if he comes near you, use your Q. You hit him a couple times with the gloves because of the additional attack speed. So gloves are usually better in these situations. If you're playing against uh, some hero that can't reach reach you, some stuff like uh, let's say some melee hero like Kunka, you know, Razor or stuff like that that can't reach you. Against those, gloves are always better. So try to buy gloves in that situations instead of uh, going for the robe. And let's see what you do here. So it's like Storm's getting a lot. Like he's not gonna get level six, and now he's just like uh, he's probably dead. So he does like fuck around a bit. Uh, the blink is nice. I like it. And then he just dies. But you see, like the only reason he actually dies is because he's like he's he just like kind of fucked up. You know, like, it's not something that you actually progressed for, right? You didn't work for this. This is like the storm just like fed you for no reason, and now you have the advantage. There, you can see this room. You get it, which is good. Okay, so this point on, let's see what you do. So there's like a few things. As as discussed before, after level 6, after Storm gets level 6, your hero actually cannot pressure this hero anymore. The reason being, Storm's ult can dodge projectiles, and your Q is a projectile, he can reliably dodge it every time, and since you max it, you can't actually do anything to him. In fact, it could actually be the opposite that he can pressure you. So in this situation, like what you want to do is after you get your ult, like you have like a few choices there, right? One is that you can look for rotations. Like you can just like blink somewhere and then like kill someone. And the other is that you don't play to pressure the storm. You play to farm. But you can't do that since you have only two levels in Scream of Pain. So I would, I would advise you to like push in a wave and then just like look for a rotation somewhere. Like just use your Sonic wave. It has a really big cooldown. The gameplay on Queen of Pain is like quite basic, right? You use your Sonic wave and you just like farm. That's like the only, that's like the gameplay of Cop. So now this is happening. Like you can see, this like you're just like you're standing here. There's like nothing happening. It's like he does, he isn't being pressured. He's just gonna farm jungle. He's just gonna go base and just a TP back. This this stuff will keep happening. Instead, what you can do is that like you should like go somewhere here, right? Like you should have mana. You should like go here. Use a scream of pain. You should use it here. Like just just don't stand here in in a lane where you can't do anything. Like your hero doesn't do tower damage either. So you're playing for runes, which is nice. As a mid laner, you should always prioritize runes. This is really good. So I like this pack that you're taking runes all the time but yeah you see like nothing's happening like for the last three minutes you're just like standing here your ult has not been used at all so yeah this is something that you can work on like if you see a hero that you can't pressure just basically use your ult somewhere and rotate and then just like keep farming so you do die here because of a bad blink but it's like like i said he can pressure you now it's not gonna be you pressuring him so this was like a bad data in that sense Moving on, you respawn, and I would expect you to, to make a rotation here. You don't have your ult. You don't want a hard commit. You just want a soft fit commit here, which is what I think you're doing, which is nice. You got one kill here, and then you're going to have your ult soon. You got another kill here. So this is pretty good, right? And now you got a double kill, and now you're close to your orchid. So there's like three variations of itemization on cop. One is the Witchblade build, one is the Kaya Sange build, and the third one is the Orchid build. So the Orchid build, people tend to go really less for, like, unless their team has, like, absolute no catch and they have to play against some Spirit or, like, some Puck or something, right? So th in that case, this Orchid is good. Your team has decent catch, but I think Orchid isn't completely bad. And, like, it's not a bad buy, so I don't mind it. So... In terms of like itemization, I can explain that you buy Witchblade when you think that your Witchblade cannot be dispelled by the enemy carry or enemy supports and when you need armor, basically. So against Lina, you do need armor, but it's like, I think the better choice is just buy Orchid and just like keep pressuring the storm, which is a better choice for sure. And the Kaya Sange one is that when they have a lot of like initiate, like they have like catch for you and you just want to like survive as much as you can, that is when you buy Kaya Sange. Moving on, your team want to fight at top and got a rush because you have Ursa, so which is good. So now it all comes to how you guys want to open the map and like pressure them, right? So the way you guys want to play this is like, so this is nice that you're farming their triangle, but it's like your team just like jumbled on mid, right? 
And when you're ahead, like when you understand that, yeah, we have ages, I have Orchid, and this Storm can't play Dota when I have Orchid, you don't want to play here. Like, you don't want to play here behind this, behind the river on your side. You want to play on their side. You see, like, they're going on your Ursa, and then the Storm is making these moves. I don't know why, probably because he has a ward on you. Like, there's a good chance he can see you because otherwise he wouldn't make these moves, right? So... You're pushing this in, which is nice. But the problem with this is that, which is, I've seen a lot in low average, is that when people get ages, like when people get an advantage, what they do is that they just like, just they just like keep the, try to keep the enemy away from like all the three lanes, which is impossible to do, right? They don't tend to focus on towers. Instead, they just like go for kills and just like make them stay in the map. So what you're going to notice is that you guys will keep doing this. Like, you see, like, you got a kill, which is nice, but it's like, whatever, like, nothing's changing, you know? Your net worth is stale. Like, if you see the net worth, for the next three or four minutes, it's just gonna stay stale, because nothing's happening, right? Like, it's like, four, five K, and like, it's like, nothing's happening at all. Like, regardless of the fact that you guys have such a big advantage, you have ages and everything, but nothing's happening, right? And you're obviously, like, you're just, like, playing behind the river, like, at all times. So, like, you can't actually pressure them either. So, the fight goes on at mid, your Ursa died, and you're not even there. So this is, like, something that is you should work on. If you have the advantage, try to play the enemy side of the map where you have vision instead of going back to farm the like, Instead, farm the wave on the bottom lane, right? Farm the triangle. Farm anything that isn't your jungle because they can't access this, right? And if you go back, then they have the opportunity to, like, go on your team and, like, regain this area. But if you're, like, standing here with Orchid, they can't actually do that. So you guys lost ages. Uh, you end up living, which is nice. You guys, like, but it's, like, overall, this should not happen. Considering you guys have a lead, like, your should never die and nothing should happen. So in the last six minutes since you got ages, like, your lead has been stagnant. Like, it's, it's been, like, four to six K. So if you guys want to fix this, it's not just for the players, like for everyone in your bracket. What you want to do is after you get ages, you want to play for objectives, right? So the mid tier two is the hardest tower to get out of all the tier twos because there's like a lot of ways where they can go on you from. But if you go for the top tier one, uh, tier two, sorry, and you have like vision set up here and if they come, they just like keep feeding you. And this is like the easiest tower to take. So you take this tower, you take this outpost, suddenly you have all of this map, right? And then your lead will keep increasing. And then this is all. This will also allow you to play bottom side of the area. Because then you can just like TP top to the outpost in case something happens. But since you guys have been standing here. Like you didn't take any objectives. You guys didn't pressure them in any way. And like if you see the lead it's like stagnant. For the last 6 minutes the lead has not increased in any way. So this is something that you should communicate with your team. Hang on. Um, you guys are like. So your team is like trying to play top now. Finally, after like almost 10 minutes, you guys decide that, yeah, we want to play here instead of, you know, just playing bot where we don't get shit, right? All we get is like their triangle and that's about it. The bot tower doesn't open anything, whereas the top tower opens up the outpost for us. Top tower opens up 70% of their map for us, right? So that is something that you need to focus on. You get an ages, you get an advantage. The first thing that you want to focus on is taking their safe lane tier 2 keep this thing in your mind safe lane tier 2 is the easiest tower to take and it also opens up the most of the map so please focus on that so now this fight is going on so this is something that i want to see right so when i go through the entire fight it's like you're not going in and there's like surviving half your team died because you were not there because you want to try to play bot which is the mistake that you're making like you want to obviously play top at all times because of the of a few reasons right not only do you get the top tower, it's like you limit them from the jungle, then you also limit them from, from the Roche area where your Ursa really thrives on getting. So if you're like constantly playing bot, you guys can't actually take Roche, even if you've been a fight at bot lane. So another thing that I want to point out is like your camera movement, like this whole fight. So this is your camera movement, right? So you just like TP in here. Like, let's see what your camera movement. So you have like... Like you can see a lot of heroes on the map, but you're, you have no info. The only info that you have is dead heroes. Like, you're not seeing the Razor. You're not seeing anything. So, let's imagine your camera movement can be something like... Like, when you're moving like this, your camera movement should be something like this, right? So, when your camera is here, you're just, like, moving in like this. And then you can see... You can see, like, everything, right? 
And then you like blink on this razor, you can kill him because your camera movement is like just better if you like do that. And then maybe you can kill Storm as well after using Orchid on him from here and because you have vision. So camera movement is like a really big thing. Like from what I've noticed, I think you're, you use edge pan. So edge pan is basically this, right? Like you, 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 move, you move your camera like this. So this is very inaccurate and slow in my opinion. So in case you want to make your Dota experience better, you want to play better. Because obviously, if you had better camera movement in this fight, you probably kill two more heroes, right? So this trade isn't exactly bad. Like right now, you have one support for three of your heroes. Whereas you could have had two of their cores. Like it would be like somewhat similar trade than what you have right now, right? If you had better camera movement. So what I would advise you is to use camera grip. So this is basically camera grip. The way I've moved my map, this is like camera grip. It's really accurate. And it's like really fast as compared to like this. So I never use ed edge pan at all. I used to use it, but ever since I saw pro players using mouse grip, this is what I've been using. So you can practice this in unranked for like 10 games. It will take you and then boom, like this is going to help you a lot. Moving on, you guys get the ages again. So it's like, I think this game should have ended like six minutes ago if you guys played it perfectly. But since you didn't, I'm just going to point out some extra things right now. Like this game is definitely losable right now because Lina's like super fat. But since you guys do win, I just want to like go over like a few things. First thing is being like, you're, I, if I see your quick buy, you're buying Hex, which is what I think you do end up buying. So normally, like you don't want to go this build. So you have the one Orchid, which is your sort of disable and one BKB, right? You don't have anything super defensive. So while well, I understand why you wanna why you wanna buy Orchid because Storm is buying a Lincoln's and you can't ac actually remove it. So what I would advise you to buy here is a Lincoln for yourself and a shard. Since Storm doesn't have a BKB, you can actively silence him. And the Lincoln is for like obvious reasons, right? If you buy Lincoln's, like the only way they can actually kill you before you can use your BKB is Storm's jump right into Mirana Arrow. So if you have Lincolns, they can never execute that. They have no way of executing that. So mid game to late game, you want to itemize for your survival. Like if you can reliably survive a lot of the stuff they have, then basically you can split push really actively. You can show in lanes really actively. Not only that, you have less chances of throwing the game because when you're ahead, every death just like snowballs in, in favor of the enemy. So you want to itemize for, you want to have one item that just like helps you not to not die is what I mean. So this is like a good example of why Lincoln is necessary, right? So you're farming this creep wave, Storm jumps you, uses his W and then boom, like you just like, like it doesn't matter where you blink, you just die after this because your HP is like too low and this is a fucking Storm, he's just gonna catch you. So if you have Lincoln's here, they can never go on you like this. So you understand the importance of Lincoln in these cases, right? And another thing, the last thing that I want to point out in this replay is notice how you guys starting, started playing one part of the map and just like gave them the other part. Yeah, it took some while, but ever since you guys started doing that, you have like more network increase. Like I've been seeing a lot of network increase ever since that. Like you see, stagnant at this point and then boom, it's just like going up. This is because you guys starting to play one of the, one part of the map instead of trying to play all three lanes which you guys can't do so yeah i think this is it for this replay analysis and because i i don't think like this game should be this long this game should have ended like 10 minutes ago because you guys had a lot of snowball potential and their heroes really can't do much against your heroes when you guys are ahead that is it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it and this was helpful if you have any suggestions or feedback do let me know in the comments if you like content like this Make sure to subscribe as I will be doing the same analysis on support and offlane. And you're going to be seeing a lot of educational content in the coming future. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.